Good evening. Welcome. Hiya. Welcome back to the old Sodcast. It's edition number 16 tonight. Appreciate anyone who's watching live throughout the course of tonight's broadcast or who may decide to watch any part of it on demand. Uh, so, as always, I'm joined by not one but two co-hosts. We've got my long-standing co-host, Jason, from Not Suitable for Mum. Good evening, Jason. Good evening. How are you? I'm all right, Jason. Um, have you had a good fortnight? It's not been too bad, yeah. I've been quite productive, so it's all good. Yep. Yep, we'll uh, we'll talk no. a little bit. A little, a little, a little, a little, a little. We'll talk I know a what you mean. <laughs> I'm going to put my teeth in first, obviously, but we'll talk a little bit about our channels uh, in a moment. Hi, it's yep. Zeb. Thank you for uh, coming in, Zeb. And of course, Hi, our our newest addition to the um, to the host um, panel is, of course, from Ranking the Obscure. It's Ian. Hi, Ian. How are you? Good evening from Northampton. <laughs> Northampton's calling tonight. It's <laughs> Northampton's calling. <laughs> Here You're are the our, results. Our, our, uh, Here are the results from the Northampton. <laughs> I was going to ask how your fortnight's been, but um, I mean, I was up with you on on this past Thursday, so it's like I've only spoke to you really like a few days yeah, ago. It's but... been a it's been an eventful fortnight, but uh, it <laughs> but yeah. um, as you know, we sorted out one resolution, and the competition's going on. Yes, and yeah. have you noticed the first tie is between the two Who albums? I watched the draw, yes. Yeah, and yeah. it's Stevie and Mick again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dan. Thank you for coming in. Nice to see you, mate. Um, always a pleasure. Um, so, uh, Jason, um, I just wanted to say, although I, I'd left your comment on it, obviously, I just want to say how much I enjoyed your uh, Under the Radar um, episode one that came out on Saturday. No. Um, just... Um, a really good idea and and uh, a credit where it's due i think you executed it very well and i hope that it continues to to be the case mate so well yeah. done, my, my son well done, my. thank you very much appreciate it yeah no it, 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 if, it, if, initial... if i sounded like a patronizing bird no 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 no. No. <laughs> so be it. no 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 it's it's, it's uh you know it's nice to hear you know i obviously jimmy uh, i I always appreciate your uh, input and that. I mean, I asked you about it in the first place. It, it and, looked, uh, yeah, the way the way you set it out, like the graphics and yeah. um, you know the information at the start and everything, else, just uh, just exactly what what it, I hoped it'd be like. Yeah, really, yeah, you know, but yeah. you know, it's, it looks good. You know, all the clips, nice and simple. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Couldn't, couldn't have done any better if I'd done it myself, Jace. Oh, well, that's saying something. <laughs> no, there's no higher compliment. <laughs> but yeah, well, yeah, now. yeah, well done on that. Have you got uh, Have you got anything uh, interesting coming up on the channel this week? Uh, not really. I mean, I've, I've probably do my records I got the other day. I'll probably do those. Um, and I am going to try and make this under the radar every Saturday. Um, the second one's already in the can. So it's given me a bit right. of leeway. Right, you're, um, all, you're all witnesses. Everyone who's here, you've heard him say he's going to do under the radar every Saturday. Going to every try. Saturday I'm going okay. to try. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, all right. Um, if if I keep up with it like I am, I mean, obviously I've got a video to make for tomorrow, and then I can go on and say like Tuesday and do another. Hopefully, do another one. So, yeah. but the, the main thing that takes the time is finding the tunes. And especially when, at the moment, I've only got 10 songs every week to go through, if you like, with the new entries. Because it's top 15 until 1978. Uh, and then it goes top 75, I think it is. And then I think it's 84 goes top 100. So as we get on, it'll probably take me a little bit longer just to go every through everything. Yeah. But, um, I suppose it's better you explain all that here on my channel than on yeah. your own, I guess. Yeah, well, I wouldn't explain it. I wouldn't explain it on mine. I've, well, I've said yeah. what needs to be said on mine, haven't I? Really? Hello, Craig Bell. Uh, thanks for coming in. Uh, Dan says, Scarlett says to say hi, guys. Hello, Scarlett. If you're hi, Scarlett. Uh, from a distance, thank you for... Uh, hello, Scarlett. Thank you for that. <laughs> Maybe, <but> hello. <laughs> and Sorry. Ian, um, no need to ask you what you've got planned for... Well, but I'm going to anyway, even though you've always got plenty of stuff planned. Anything in particular that you're excited about for... Yeah, ranking the the new, new show that I start tomorrow. Ah, yes, that's right. Yes. 
the perfect side of a record. It's got to be a record. Like one, it's going to have a side one, a side two. It could have a side three. Well, it wouldn't it? Wouldn't make sense to be a CD, would it? <laughs> yeah, I've got that. Uh, and obviously, I'm working on a very special video, the fiftieth yeah. collaboration with Richard McCook. Mm. Yes, yeah. We're going to do our top twenty glam songs. I could be good. Yeah, I'll because be... when we our first very video together was the music, the records of Chin and Chapman. So we thought we'd do something very similar, and yeah. And then we had the draw yesterday. Has anyone watched how Richard got one ball in the basket? Well done. Oh, well, he was chucking a bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's probably one more than I would have got, to be fair. Yeah, I think, yeah so, but yeah. yeah. But that's, yeah, so I've been, I've got, been working on that because I've got to get it ready for Thursday. Mm. So I'll old, uh, old Larry Bird of the vinyl community. Yes. If anybody remembers that far yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so it's just, <laughs> just got the usual stuff for the week, which is yeah. already ready to go. And uh, it'll be the live live stream on Thursday. Uh, is it Focus Year 86? 86, yeah. yeah. I hope I'll be a part of that. Mm. Um, I, um, I'll... Well, I'll be there or I'll be in the chat, but if I'm there, then uh, I'll be a part of it, obviously. Well, we got the new uh, the new voting system, which... Yes. yes. Yeah. See, I've got a superstar in Dave. He finds all these things out, doesn't he? Mm. It was nice to see him on camera the other day, actually. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. he, does, he does show up. He does show his face occasionally, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I had no idea what he looked like because I only ever sort of heard him, you know, doing yeah, these uh, in, in real life. And stuff. <laughs> well, did, yeah. he, did he meet your wildest dreams, Jason? <laughs> no, he seems so. You know, it's like most of the blokes. Is, is that been your like on your mind ever ever since um, you you started? No, um, but you, you know, people, like, I, I you... Mas- I, I'm dying to know what Mastermind Dave looks like. It, and to be fair, I, I'm I'm ribbing you a little bit, but it can yeah, be know. like that. It's um, and it's funny because I suppose this links, this leads in a little bit to what we're going to be talking about tonight. But sometimes, yeah. um, when you listen to someone's voice, like say a radio DJ or yeah, maybe someone reading an audio, or anything where you can't see the face, and if you don't know them, it you can it, it can you be a, reacting sometimes. You can think, I wonder what they look like in yeah. real life. You get like, a mental you know, image up here. Yeah, so, I mean, some people, obviously, your famous DJs and stuff like that. I mean, like no one's gonna. You know, hear say Kenny Everett and not be able to picture him of a oh, certain no, no. at least. But there's there's other there's other people and it'll be like, Well, I don't actually know what they look like. Yeah. But well, the voice is really familiar. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what a lot of the uh, today's DJs are like. I wouldn't even know who was on there to be fair. Yeah. So um, you know. well as for uh, as for my channel, uh, a couple of videos coming out this week. Tomorrow at midday is another records roundup, but it is another artist special. So it's all dedicated to one particular group. I think it's a group people might have heard of. I'll say no more because that's coming in uh, right. well in uh, at midday tomorrow. And then Thursday, I've got what's a pretty long video actually, um, I, but it's one I've been wanting to do for years, and I'm going to be showing my entire. And I do mean entire. Uh, New Order, Joy Division, and Factory Re- Records related DVD oh. collection. So that's. that's uh, uh, are you uh, going to split it, or are you going to do all as one video? It's all it's all as one. This I did think about splitting yeah. it, and then I thought, you know what? A lot of people put long videos up. Why? Why shouldn't I? Why can't? Oh. I, why can't I put a forty-five minute? Yeah, oh, no, no, no. It's just that you know what people's <laughs> attention spans are like sometimes. So yeah, but this one, I know it's going to be niche anyway. I think you know yeah. if people are either going to be interested or not interested, whether it's like one one forty five minute video, two twenty odd minute videos, yeah. or three or four well, yeah. shorter ones, you know. So I'm just, you know, I'm just putting it out there because it's been a yeah. not a passion project. It wasn't it wasn't a video that, you know, felt really fun and enjoyable to do. It was kind of like, well, this has been on a kind of checklist for ages now. I can finally tick it off. But I did enjoy, I enjoyed it and I I hope um, people enjoy watching it. But um, anyway, that's that's what's coming up on uh, my channel this week. And I've got plenty of stuff scheduled for future weeks. But um, we'll, uh, you know, 
we'll talk about that another time. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping before we get cracking with the main topic. Sodcast is back in three weeks' time today, not two. Um, yeah, a certain panellist of ours has mucked our schedule up. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, no, I'm pointing. <laughs> you know, you know why I pointed the rock because I'm I'm looking at myself on this on this left panel on the um, on the restream. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> you're, you're below me, but I, I needed to point. See, I still can't. Yeah. But there. Yeah. So, sorry, Ian. I, it looked like I blamed you for no reason. <laughs> it's not Ian's fault. It's Jason. Yeah, it's mine. Um, but yeah, we're back in three weeks rather than two. There'll be plenty of other live streams. Of course, make sure that you're subscribing to Ranking the Obscure because he does this every Thursday. Uh, there's also Vinyl Dale. Uh, we had a really good um, chat about Oasis and it drifted off into talking about mini discs on Friday. Yeah. So that was. Yeah, really I, I, good. I, I had an unexpected um, uh, thing to do. It's nice when that happens, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was only the two of us, you know, on there. But, you know, we we went two out. Well, Simon went two hours and I, I joined sort of about 25 minutes in. Um, but, yeah, it, and there was a lot of, lot of good um, uh, responses in the chat as well. It, it was really enjoyable. Um, you know, obviously, I, you know, I don't want to speak on behalf of Simon, but I believe he's planning a James Bond related thing this coming Friday. So that's one I'm very, oh, that can be quite cool. yeah. And, yeah. uh, Ivan music man's in hello from Norway. Thank you for coming oh, in hello. and watching us from Norway. Appreciate it. Hope, um, hope the weather's pleasant there in, uh, Scandinavia, Ivan. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, let's, um, let's talk radio, shall we? So okay. radio, um, yeah. Uh, it uh, it was the big thing before TV. Jason, <laughs> yeah, Jason like you're very old. Tell us about when when the radio were uh, well came out. <laughs> I suspect Ian probably knows more than I do. Well, uh, yeah, I mean um, Saturday mornings on Radio One used to be Junior Choice. Now Junior Choice had been going many many years before even I listened to it. Now, when I first started listening to it, it was Ed Stewart that did Junior Choice. Uh, and there's that famous jingle where he goes, hello, darling, and lots of giggling, giggling. Now, that was done at a hospital, a lad said about his girlfriend, have you got a message for your girlfriend? And he went, hello, darling. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but that, I mean, I did a thing on uh, Junior Choice, all the songs that used to be played on Junior Choice. If you oh. don't look on my channel and just put Junior Choice, it'll pop up. Uh, um, did it, did it, it ran for quite some years. Oh, it? cool. It still sort of comes on at Christmas because Annika Rice does it now. Uh, I thought uh, right. Tony Blackburn done it for a little while. Yeah. When was, the, dog. when was his peak era? Because I don't, I don't ever remember listening to him myself, I don't think. I might have done when I was little. I don't recall, but Ed Stewart. Ed Stewart. I know Ed Stewart. He was on Cracker Jack, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah it's five, oh, five, no, five, no, five, five Cracker Jack. I can't remember who did it before, but it, it, it's but it was it went for about 30, 40 years. But it used to play, used to play pop songs, but th very popular songs like yeah, things. Was this uh, Radio One? Radio One, yeah, it was on Radio One. And then at Christmas, they used to go around the hospitals, you know, which was fantastic. Yeah, um, vague recollections of it, very vague. Yeah, uh, things like How Much Is That Doggy in the Window was a favourite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the Runaway Train. Yep. Gilly Gilly, Goss and Feather, Cats and Go up by the sea, which is Max Bygraves. Yeah, I was about to say that, isn't that Max Bygraves? Yes, and the pink toothbrush, the pink toothbrush and the blue toothbrush. Yes. Uh, hmm. And then yeah. there, there was another one, uh, John Pertwee, which goes on to another bit of radio that I love. Uh, he did the, uh, the grandfather's clock. So apart from all these yeah, uh, pop songs of the, of the day, all these old classics used to come out, The Laughing Policeman. And I it was just a joy to listen to as a kid. Mm. You know, you put, you, you yeah. know, there wasn't, there wasn't Saturday morning 
TV then, you know, Swap Shop hadn't started, nor Tiz was. So yeah. that was sort of our thing, you know. And we used to have it on every... Mm. Yeah, we had... Um, I, I think the reason why I didn't listen to that that much was because we had a, a local radio sort of had their equivalent of, and it was called Albert's Gang. And they used to broadcast it from the old... Uh, what was the old uh, rail station hotel in Southampton? Mm, I know a chap it. called chap called Nick Gardler did it. Very well known in in local radio, and uh, I even went to I even went to a couple. And it's basically you know like you say sing songs, but this was more things like you know one man went to Mo and uh, I'm trying to think of other kids songs like that. But you know you get the sort of thing that I meant. Um, yeah, and the that Diddy Man was a favourite as well. Oh yes, I remember the Diddy Men. Yeah, yeah. I think I had that on record somewhere, actually. Yeah, what the? Yeah, I've got an LP. I've actually done an album review of Ken Dot and the Diddy. Oh Man. blimey! Because <laughs> it's that got was... this, "Where's me shit?" On it. Yeah, is... it was. Uh, what was it? The ones I had was uh, "We Are the Diddy Men" on one side. Yeah. And Nick Knocky Nick Knack on the Nicky other. Nicky Knacky New. Yeah. Nicky Nacky New. That's it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, no, ours was more sort of like traditional stuff. Um, um someone said they actually had Ronald Dahl come and uh, do some reading on there. Oh, that'd have been fabulous. Yeah, um, I don't know when that would have been. I mean, I must have been about three when I went, something like that. I wasn't very old, maybe a little bit older. Um, but it was like jokes and story time, bit of banner. It was, it, I, I suppose, you said about Tiz was. It was, you know, they didn't have the the. Uh, you know, custom pies and all the rest of it, but it was kind of like that um, sort of chaotic environment because you know they say never work with kids and everything. You imagine there's probably about twenty kids in there, all running around like loonies, and each trying to keep, keep everybody under control. And then kids say something they shouldn't say necessarily. So yeah, yeah, that, that's 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 the kids one I remember more than the the one you mentioned. Mm. You see, the other thing about being a kid, when I, I remember as a kid listening to the Dad's Army radio series. Yeah. That was on when I was nine, ten, and I remember because we used to listen to it in, it was on about eight o'clock, seven o'clock at night, and we used to have to get ready for bed and listen to it in bed. Mm. was allowed to listen to it in bed. And I remember the very last sort of, resembles of the navy lark now my dad had listened to navy lark when he was small and it was coming to its end step toe and son so when i got that's why i like radio comedy because i dad used to record mm. you know all these recordings and if there weren't i think he put a to go to bed and i still do it to this very day because when yeah, i go to bed at that's night the thing. um you know obviously radio you know, like your first your first thought is music, but you know, there's yeah. there's other facets of radio, like what Ian says, this comedy, this news, you know, just general yeah. talk, you know. Um, so you know, it it it, it encompasses a lot. It's it's um, you know, I I just treat radio now as sort of like not not an obsolete thing, but just something that. You know, yeah. when it comes to being, you know, entertainment providers, it's on. Un it's sad to say, I know, but it's yeah. going down yeah. there for me now. I, I do want to. I do want to throw it back to Ian for for a moment though, because I want to. I want to ask something that, um, given, given your age, which we won't, which we won't say, and <laughs> I don't know exactly, but I just wondered if, um, if you had any particular memories of when uh, Radio One first came on the air. Because it replaced the light program, didn't it? I'm, I'm, I when that happened, I was three, so I don't remember that happening. Mm. But I remember, you know, when I started really getting into music, um, Radio One Breakfast Show was done by Noel Ledmans, mm. and I've been to Radio One road shows. Mm. We happen to be on holiday on the East Coast. Just, uh, you funny you saying that. Ah. Oh. You see the mug? No, when Nile Edmonds breakfast show. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That's in my mum's garage. 
They let me have it. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we went to Great Yarmouth, and it was like being at a gig. I mean, thousands of people would turn up for Oh, yeah, gig. yeah. We, and, um... uh, Sorry, Jace, I meant to make you big there. Just uh, hold that up again for us. So, uh, oh, just, hang on, uh, so, so yeah. that we can have a better look. Sorry, I, that's, me, that's me. I'm uh, I'm not with it tonight. There you go, that's, that's all right. Noel Edmonds, Late Late Breakfast Show. Oh, that, that was the Late Late Breakfast Show. That was the TV thing, wasn't it, actually? Yeah. Yeah, they got the wrong thing. Oh, Sorry, Jake, you got the wrong prop. <laughs> oh, never mind. I thought it was, oh. I thought it was, I thought it was the... Uh, no, that the was the, the TV spin-off. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Never mind. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, but, um, it, it, was, it's, it all links in, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ivan's a son about pirate radio. Now, that, obviously, that was a huge thing in the 60s mm. over here. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm not going to go too much into that tonight because that's, no. that's a project I'm working on. Ah, okay. Ooh, well, I mean, okay. it's... It, it's not something that I can talk. I think by the time, you know, I I had my first memories of radio, kind of 84, 85. If, well, if pirate, I'm sure pirate radio was still a thing, probably not in it, you know, in, com in yeah. comparison to its 60s heyday. But yeah. my, my, got, uh... parent, my parents definitely didn't listen to it. So um, I can't really sort of. You know, um, Dan brought up earlier about Atlantic 252. Yeah, that was a pirate. Uh, pirate. Which was a long wave. I think technically that was, it was like a legal pirate, weren't it? Yeah, you? Well, yeah, Luxembourg wasn't so much. But the, it, the most famous one is LBC and yeah. Lady Caroline. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, then um, they had, what brought it back into the thing was the film, was it Rock the Boat? Yeah. The Boat That Rocked, yeah. The Boat That Rocked, that was it. Um, the, yeah, that. That was about the heyday of, yeah. and that was exactly what it was like. The uh, it's funny you say that actually. There's one I used to listen to. It was only lasted for about a year and a half. Um, it was Laser Five Five Eight. I don't yeah, know if anyone I remember Laser Five Five Eight. wasn't very long, was it? It's about a year yeah, and a half. They played half decent music. It was all American DJs, and that that was out in the North Sea, wasn't it? I think. Yeah. Off there was it. Someone said something about it being a, a, an island for a while, broadcasting from Ireland for a while as well, because they had to keep moving because of this, um, what was it, uh, siege thing that was going on with the radio uh, co corporation trying to get them shut down. Yes. I can't remember exactly. You know, They did it with Radio Caroline as well. It was around about the same sort of time that Radio Caroline shut down, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, Craig's right. It was a great explanation. I mean, when these yeah. films come out, it, it was exactly like that. I mean, I knew. I, think I've seen I, that. I used to know a guy. He was really into it, and he said that film really did sum up what it was all about. And obviously, it. my dad knew about you know because I'd listened to it on the little transistor radios. As well, so, you, so, yeah. right, Ian, you can call it a tranny if you want. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> no, you can't say that anymore. No, you can't <laughs> but because in them days, that's what it was. It was a radio, everyone <laughs> has one with a little ear, the little earpiece. Yeah, yeah. I, um, my dad, um, when, when I used to go on uh, long walks with my dad when I was younger, he had this, um, it, it was a Sony because he only ever used to buy Sony stuff. It was this lovely portable black black radio it had like a outer protective leather bag almost type thing and a, and a bit of a strap and uh, it, it just take it with us and like you know like um i think we had shortwave on it we didn't listen to much short oh god that's something else that anyone who's an expert on it could probably yeah. do a whole show about that really shortwave yeah. radio but um just this lovely i think i think he took it out mainly when um when it was a Saturday afternoon, so that if we're out on a walk, when the football results started coming in, we could we could listen to them. I don't, I don't recall us listening to any any music stations with it, but it, we'd take it out sometimes oh, yeah. when right. walking, and, be... and we'd listen yeah. to the uh, football, um, the classified with check and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, the the, the on the it was used to be on. I the, think the I think rainy, we used I think we used to do that when we went on holiday because we had a caravan and you'd stick the old radio. We had a TV as well, but stick the radio on sort of like in the afternoon, just background music and stuff. And uh, that was usually quite good. You know, someone would come on and go, oh, yeah, that's a good tune. 
you know, we'll have to look for that in the record shop when we're out and about or whatever. No, I always get co- I always get confused with um, dates and like the the different radio bands and stuff. I don't know if Ian might be able to shed any light on it. Sorry, and he feels like I'm putting a lot of pressure on you here, but I just wonder when did um, when did FM become kind of standard for oh, at least in the FM, UK. I, mean, I remember when. I mean, Radio One used to be on two seven five and two eight five on the medium wave. Mm. Uh, Radio Two seemed to always have FM. Yeah, I get the feeling they they went FM maybe before Radio One. Yeah, did, radio, yeah, Radio One didn't go FM. The only time Radio One went FM was sort of when the Friday Rock was show was on, which I'll talk yeah. about a bit later. But mm. yeah, it was two seven five two eight five. Um, and they had a retune thing. Radio Four went on the long wave because Radio Two used to be on the long wave. Yeah. I was just going to ask about well, that. Fifteen hundred yeah. meters on the long wave. Now, when they had the big changeover, Radio Two went on to medium wave, and Radio Four went on to the long wave, mm. which caused a lot of confusion with the cricket and the shipping <laughs> forecast. Yeah. Mm. That's the other thing I used to do is listen to Test Match Special. Because you know, I was just gonna, I was gonna, just gonna say, I remember the shipping forecast on Radio Solid because obviously we're down near the docks, yeah. So we used to get it quite a lot. There's something the shipping forecast. I, I don't think I've ever heard it live, but I've certainly heard sort of bits of it yeah. around and about. Is there's something to me? I don't know why because it's it's still going now. We you, you yeah. know it's on it's on seven days a week on Radio Four. I think they do two of them, don't they? Like a short one and a and a slightly longer one. There's something a bit kind of there's something a bit Cold War about it to me, and I can't <laughs> I can't really explain it any better than that. Mono, yeah, mono. You know, it's it's it just it just it, it evokes kind of memories of you know sort of like. The Iron Curtain and things like that. I can't no, it's it, weird, in it? Because it's yeah. it's not about that at all. No, I get what you mean, though. It just seems oldy worldy, doesn't it? Almost. Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's like, like uh, the what was it called? Sports Day that on five o'clock on uh, on Saturday, which was started in the forties, I think. I've got a book um, that Pat Murphy, the broadcaster, wrote about the history of Sports Day. And it had the same theme tune right up until the very end. You know, da, 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 da. you know, five o'clock on a Saturday. Everyone used to tune it wherever you was in the country. Everyone would a in the winter to listen to the football results, and then in the summer you still put it on because I used to do it. Great thing they changed the music to this modern thing. In, yeah, and the viewers went mad, so they reverted back to the. Old 19th, the original theme. And, you know, the people have presented that. Des Lyman did it. Eamon Andrews. You remember, this is your life. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Eamon Andrews. That yeah. For many, many years. Mm. Pat Murphy's mm. done it. Uh, you know, it, a lot mm. of um, broadcast, sports broadcasters cut their teeth on sports day. Yeah. Um, Ivan says, FM broadcasting began in the UK on the 2nd of May, 1955. That sounds really, really early. I'm, I'm not doubting it, Ivan. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that information's right. It's just FM, I mean, you know, my my father's stereo system, um, it was, once again, is in home hi-fi. It was a Sony. The... Um, Radio One, of course, by the mid '80s, was definitely on FM because you could just tell when yeah. you heard it. It was just it was, it was pure. So eighty-seven point five, something like that. No, Radio One was ninety-seven to ninety-nine. That was it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, thank yeah you. I said that. Um, yeah. Just sound, just sounded so so rich. I mean, I know it it helped that it was a really good Sony Hi-Fi. You know, separate separate components couple of really good speakers positioned you know positioned well in the in the living room um but but the sound of it it, it, it just and then like when we'd switch to medium wave like in the car or or for whatever whatever else or if we were listening to atlantic 252 in the 90s and it's like i don't know i i was always of the i was always of the thought of well why when you go to fm would you want to listen to anything else but i know some stuff 
you can only listen to on the other bands, but it's like, shouldn't everyone want to be on FM? And I know it's yeah. it's not possible because of bandwidth and, and all the rest of it, stuff that I don't really understand. But um, yeah, it, it yeah, it's um, it's stereo. The the ra- the FM radio on that sound. Um, I mean, it was all it was almost always tuned into Radio One. I think sometimes we tune in stuff like Radio Derby, Radio Sheffield, and mm. I'll touch a bit more on local radio in, in a little bit because the there is a bit of an anecdote that I, well, it's not really an anecdote. But there is something I want to say on on yeah. the, on a personal favorite local radio station of mine. Um, but yeah, FM Radio One in particular. Um, I it's uh, my dad did a lot of home taping. I mean, that's that's another avenue that we can go down. You know, yeah. taping off the radio. I mean, me and me and me mom and me brother. I mean, we kind of took the mick after a while. Like, well, no wonder he's not buying any records anymore. But <laughs> anytime, anytime he hears a single on on the top forty, or he hears something on John Peel or Annie Nightingale. He'll tape it off the radio, and then he, he he didn't he didn't spend any money on music for donkey's years. Yeah. I mean, on blank cassettes, you know. But it but when you played those cassettes back on that system, this sounded so good. You know, they sounded you know just as good, maybe even better than if you'd bought the seven inch single or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, in a, looking back, I can't I kind of can't blame him for doing all that home taping. No. Really, it was the it um... sounded so bloody good. You know. Yeah, it was the whole thing. My dad had, um, I think it was an AWA stereo, one of the big bulky things. And you either sat there with your hand, the hand over the pause button, or we had a little switch that could insert silence mm. in there. I don't know if, if you remember that on a stereo. Yeah, I, I, a we didn't button. have one of them, but I know the sort of thing you mean. Yeah. 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 And it's just like you press it, hold it down, and then when it started doing the song, you let go and it. You know, and then what you did is you re-recorded the tape again, but without all the gaps, because you had tape to tape. See, what um, I I was very lucky. I had a, a, a granddad and a dad that was a bit wizardry. Now, back in the day with TV, we used to have our um, transmitter was at Sutton Coalfield, and then they got Sandy Heath, and all our TV <laughs> turned to Sandy Heath. So we had to get a new aerial. But we still had the old certain coalfield aerial. So we had one of them sort of radio brandings, you know, and this is they only hooked up the old certain coalfield aerial to the hi-fi so we could have a great radio antenna mm. for, <laughs> for the radio, because it was still crackly on a little transistor. But when you got a proper <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think my dad had a proper aerial, at least in maybe not in the in the second house I lived in, but the first one, cert- certainly because it just, you know, I think that was even though it was, I think I would say that for a lot of the time, especially when we're listening to the top forty every every uh, every Sunday afternoon, I think I think we only had a had a black and white um, portable TV till about nineteen eighty four maybe even early 85 mm. and i think i'd probably would have said i preferred the radio to television when you know as young as i was yeah you know it's, it's you know you can't really have an opinion there and then when you're four years old but looking back you know radio sounded so crisp and clear and rich whereas the tv we were watching was just on this like crappy black and white thing yeah. and it, it, um, it wasn't very enjoyable. So I would have said radio were better than TV probably when I was four years yes, old and, yeah. for me, but that was because of the you know the situation that we, that we had. Um, yeah. I mean, just, the top forty. Yeah, everyone listened to the top forty because that's yeah. when yeah. the number one was. Bruno Brooks was the uh, the DJ I remember. Oh, I've what I I went through fluff. Mm. Tommy um, Vance. Tony Black. Yeah, Tony Vance did it for a while. Frank Skinner was another one. No, I'd stop it. Did he? When did no, Frank, no, 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 no. Frank Skinner was the comedian. Well. No other Frank Skinner. Was Do you it mean Frank Rick, Skinner? Richard Skinner? Richard Skinner, thank you. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't think of his name. <laughs> yeah, Craig Belter about Kenny Everett. Now, I used to listen, we used to listen to Kenny Everett on a Saturday. And the only reason we listened to it because of Crafting Kremen. <laughs> but he's right. Kenny Everett kept playing Bohemian Wops Rhapsody. Yes, mm. yeah. And that's how it become big. Uh, well, Kenny Everett was 
to me, he was the first DJ that pushed the boundaries with all his jingles. Yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, he got thrown off radio one, well, didn't he? But he went on. He, it, it's funny you say about him, actually, because again, going back to Albert's gang, he was on Albert's gang, right? I think that was when he first got fired from Radio One in the seventies or whatever it was. And he ended up doing tapes for Radio Solent from his house. He'd make up the tapes. And I think there's quite a few radio stations he sent them off to. But Radio Solent used to broadcast him uh, as well. And it's the tapes he used to make yeah, up. There's, there's, an there's an interesting video. Um, I've mentioned him a, a fair bit on these before. But by um, Tecmo, who a lot of people will know, like big YouTuber, and he did a video about um he managed to obtain some some rare Kenny Everett produced like um jingle carts, you know, the yeah. carts that you know that you'd play in between records and in between news items and stuff. And uh, these weren't these were from um I think I think it might be the station you're referring to actually, Jason, but he, I think he might have worked in like in uh, other ones in the area, but yeah, and I think all the he did all the same sort of jingles, but then he'd like yeah. slightly modify them to say what the name of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think Paul, was. I think Portsmouth had them as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Portsmouth. It might be the Portsmouth one. He had most of the carts from actually. I uh, just yeah. want to. Um, I just want to address um, or try and answer this question from from Nick. Hi, Nick. Nice to see you. By the way, uh, he wants to know if he's right in thinking that there used to be a license for the radio. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's included in the TV license now. It was. But I would have, I would have thought that before, like TV became ubiquitous, that there would have been a just a radio license. I'm assuming. I don't. Wasn't... I don't actually know when that would have. What yeah. that going to go back to at least the 19, yeah. 1930s or forties, perhaps. I Wasn't think there's it... always been a, a. You've had to have a license to. Yeah. Wasn't it because of what it was broadcast on initially? That's the main reason. And then when yeah, they changed it, a lot to do with that. Yeah, yeah. Because now it's like you know they just call it the TV license, but it, yeah. does, it does cover radio. But yeah, I suppose originally, I mean, it's like it's like the listings magazine. I mean, Radio Times that was obviously named because when it first came out, there was only radio, and the name and the name stuck. I mean. If they change, well, they couldn't change it to TV Times because that's a different magazine altogether. But it'd yeah. be just weird if they suddenly called it Television Times or something, wouldn't they? Do you know how much they earn now? They're about a five or a week. I know my mum. Really? Uh, my mum was a subscriber because uh, she she had one of those um, offers that, that they have, um, like get six months for a tenner or something, and then like because it's direct debit and you have to like go through the hassle of going through your bank to. To cancel it, it took her ages to cancel it, and the, yeah. the, after the six month, you know, like bargain period, it, the the prices that were charging for for a magazine a week was atrocious. Yeah, was, like my mum was like, I've got to, I've got to get to the bank and sort because she don't do yeah. internet banking. Like if it was me, I could have just got on my app. And cancelled yeah. it. It would have. Oh, yeah. You might have to physically go into the bank and say, "Can you can you stop my direct debit to the Radio Times, please? It's too expensive." Yeah. Oh dear, but yeah, I, I, I did like their um, their radio listings um, because yes. they always had, I think they, I think they still do, even though a lot of stuff now you can get on the internet and on demand and DAV yeah. as well. But I think they still have the you know the FM frequencies next to Radio One, Two, etc. Um, the medium wave, if if there's any medium wave one still going. You know, it, so um, you know, I always like Radio Times for just putting that little bit of extra info in to help, help you out. Really, I've got a funny feeling that, that they actually did like um, a graph as well, so you could see what was on at what time and what station. Because I had a one of the first radio uh, record players I had had, you know, medium wave, long wave, um, FM, might even have had AM as well. I can't remember. And they, we put little stickers on it, so when you turn the dial, we knew exactly where the stations were. Yeah, um, well, when they read done all that, they sent all these little stickers out so you could put them yeah. on the radio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they, they, I think when they did the radio times initially, they laid the layout like that so you could compare when shows were on so they didn't conflict. Mm. I could be wrong, but that, that's how I remember it. Yeah. 
Um, Nick, you know, I, I know of Emperor Roscoe. He was it was quite an early early face at Radio yeah, I know, One. I've heard of Emperor Roscoe. Yeah, he was a good DJ. I, 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 I would have heard I would have heard his voice somewhere. I'm I'm certain. He, for me, he's I associate that name with the with the sixties or possibly into the seventies. Yeah, yeah. I don't, don't think it's someone I ever listened to, to be honest. Well, it's no one I would have listened to, like you know, in yeah. in real time. But I'm, but I know of him from you know, just kind of, you know, hearing about people on you know documentaries and and other shows and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. So, uh, does that could anyone name uh, a, a radio DJ who they always hated? Say, say, if, like you heard them, like you'd want to turn them off right away. Uh, Jake, then I'll go to you first for that. I can't really think of anyone in particular. Most of them are right. Simon Bates could be a bit irritating at times, <laughs> uh, which I'll, I'll bring him up again later on. Um, but yeah, no, he, he he could be a bit he could be a bit irritating. I think it's just because of his, his voice, and also um, you tended to get a bit cheesed off with him after the in the business with the pirate with the um, pirating video cassettes. I think that that. Uh, he always like, had that kind of sort of um, slightly kindly, but still a bit pompous school. Yeah, yeah it was sort of school vibe. school teacherish when, almost. When I when I've done when I did my top of the pops reactions, I'm saying it in the past tense now because yeah. um, it's uh, I don't know um, if I'm able to carry that series on particularly well this yeah. year. But um, every time I saw that it was a Simon Bates one, I'm like, oh, it's like it's like having your blooming uncle present top of the pops. Yeah. It's just a, it, it's a bit stuffy, isn't it? Um, and he tried to be he tried to be kind of you know hip and with it, and he just wasn't working, was it? For Simon Bates, no. Ian, Ian, have you got any memories of any radio DJs who you hated or you just didn't want to listen to for whatever reason? Oh. Jimmy Young used to get on my wick. Ah, it's, it's funny. You, it's funny you say that actually, because um, uh, that leads in nicely to mine. Oh, Jimmy <laughs> Young. It seemed. I mean, you know, we gotta remember when I was growing up. What they play on radio, they don't even play what's on Radio One now. On Radio Two. Now, no. when I was a lad, Radio Two, you got Mantravani, James Lars. Yeah. And it was all what your nan listened to. I mean, my nan was an avid. She had Terry Wogan on every morning. I, I was going to bring up Wogan, yeah. But Terry yeah. Wogan was a legend, you know. He was. <laughs> I actually met a Radio One DJ, John Dunn. Mm. He sat opposite me in the train, and I've never seen a man with bigger hands than John Dunn. They were not hands; <laughs> they were. <laughs> It was like Kenny Everett's brotherly love. So <laughs> yes. He'd have been good as a fielder at cr in cricket then, would he? <laughs> God, he could have caught everything, yeah. It was, but, but no, I didn't <laughs> want... A lot of the DJs that I used to like, they've got great radio voices. I mean, the legend, the, the legend Steve Wright. Yeah, see, oh. I was... I, I I understand, and uh, a friend of mine who um, actually he he um he was watching my first test stream the other day, but um um Lee Glasby, who's been uh, one of my best friends for donkey's years now, and he's he's worked in radio for for about thirty years. I know he, he Steve Wright was a was a big influence on him, just for like you know his his creation of you know characters <coughs> and his. Kind yeah. of zoo radio approach, really. Zoo radio approach, yeah. He that we hadn't we hadn't got anything like that. The nearest I, he got to it was Kenny Everett. Now, because that's why I think you know that's why the BBC because he was just too outrageous. He wasn't yeah, outrageous. Yeah. He was just a genius. Yeah, and, mm. and Steve but Wright that, was. But yeah, no, no. Steve, was Steve Wright. He had. Is it Peanut Boy in Spot the Dog? Uh, Mister Angry. Yeah. I tell you why I remember Peanut Boy was because there was a guy at work we used to call it because he was so blooming gormless. <laughs> I don't know if that's what he meant by it, but that we, yeah, we yeah, uh, yeah, Steve Wright. I mean, when I was I was in hospital when I was in hospital as a lad, I was in hospital for a long time with my back. Yeah, and we used to have school in hospital, but we used to they used to say the radio had to be turned off. 
And we said, no, we want Steve Wright on in the afternoon. Yeah. Hmm. And we used to have at two o'clock. We said we would turn the radio off in the morning because we didn't want Simon Bates and our tune. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah, that was another oh, one, yeah. God. God and yeah. They, 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 they used to let us have Steve Wright in the afternoon. Mm. Yeah, I think that's another reason because it was it was all very whimsical, wasn't it? That our oh, tune or whatever it was, oh. and, you know. Well, that, that, apparently that rate that bit of music is a classical piece because so, my mate Lee said it it was on classic FM. <laughs> he just he was half expecting a real weepy story from Simon Bates. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, my, a radio presenter who at the time and. I suppose even now I wouldn't have rated as one of the all-time greats of radio, but um, my mum used to um, walk down to the local hairdressers like pretty much every week, you know, like to for just to get it washed or permed or yeah. whatever in the in the mid to late eighties, and um, it guaranteed the, at the hairdressers because I'd go with her when it wasn't school, obviously on school holidays and on weekends. And the um, radio station would always be Radio 2 playing. I mean, guaranteed, because my mum always used to have the same kind of time slot every time she went to the hairdressers. Um, it'd always be the end of the Jimmy Young programme. So we'd have like this sort of like grandfatherly type Jimmy Young. But then came on a guy who, even when I was kind of six, seven, eight years old, I was like, what? This guy's got a weird voice. Why is he on radio? Why is he on the radio? And this was Radio 2, obviously. I don't know. Um, uh, Ian will, will remember. I'm, and Jake, you'll know who is Jason. But for me, he's like one of the, I don't know if, if worst radio presenters is fair, because I'm sure he had skills somehow. But Derek yeah. Jameson, I've got so Oh, many, he was bloody awful. I've got so many vivid memories of hearing that weird Cockney accent of his, like every week. Like that's the only time yeah, we was... could hear him. Because I mean, we wouldn't have Radio 2 on at home because Radio 1 was still decent. You know, yeah. that, your dad wanted to take oh. on Peel and all the chart stuff. So we'd, never, we'd not, only ever listen to Radio 2 when we were down at the hairdressers. Mm. It's always bloody Derek Jameson mm. on. He was on uh, He was on TV quite a bit, wasn't oh, he? On things like... Um, uh, oh, what was I mean, he on? Was oh, on? Wait a minute. Come on. He was a newspaper mm. editor first and foremost. Yeah. I think, it was I on think something like... I think, was like, the, I think he was editor of the of the Daily Express, but maybe yeah. around the same time, or maybe maybe a bit before. I don't know, but it just it was, yeah. I, I can hear his voice in my head. Oh, no, yeah, I can, so I can see. Voice. I can see his face. Well, I, I can as well. Which you, yeah, yeah, I suppose, no, no, I suppose no, no, he's had a good for radio, if nothing else. Yeah, like yeah, you, no, he, yeah, no, he's rubbery. What he all rubbery faced and um, he was on something like. What was that Star Maker show or whatever it was? It was on something like that. It was a panelist on there or some some sort uh, of thing like that. Like, it would be like New Faces or something like something that. Something like or, that, or yeah. Community Knox, one of that, yeah, one of those sort of things. Yeah, yeah if it wasn't that, it was something like it. And yeah, I got a funny I, I, feeling. I do recall seeing them on TV now and again, but yeah, like every bloody week, like this. At the hairdressers and have radio two on always same time of day. Jimmy Young would be knocking off and he'd be handing over to Derek Bloody Jameson. Um just um yeah, and I, I you know, he's even as a young child, I would listen to him and like he don't sound like any of the other DJs no, who no. I know. He don't sound like um, you know, it would have been Bruno Brooks on, on the top four yeah. at that point, or like you know, my dad used to tape a lot of stuff off for uh, John Peel and Annie Nightingale, and sometimes yeah. he, he, he'd miss, you know, when he's trying to do his pause in to get rid of the talky stuff. Yeah. He'd, he'd yeah. miss bits, and then you'd hear a little bit of Annie Nightingale or a little bit of Peely. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just uh, just really strange yet quite vivid <laughs> memories. I've sat, I've sat drinking a hot chocolate while waiting for my mum to get her hair permed or whatever it, or whatever it was. It to Derek, Derek, Jameson. Derek Jameson blather on. Yeah, I mean, DJs in those days were DJs. They put the records on themselves. Yeah, and yeah. And them up. And... I, think, I think a few of them still do. Do you think, do you think Jameson could be considered one of the sort of early... Like maybe kind of you get a load of them now, especially on like Radio Two, but kind of celebrity DJs who weren't who weren't necessarily trained in that area. Yeah, in they, the, do. they have someone I mean? there just uh, 
pushing all the buttons and they do all the talking. Yeah, because mm. you, know, you get a lot of it, like people like Graham Norton, for instance, on Radio 2. I mean, he, I'm yeah. sure he wouldn't have had much interest in radio until the BBC said, oh, well, you know, we'll yeah. pay you yeah. like what, however many hundreds of thousands a year for you to mm. do a show on Radio 2. Whereas, like, someone like, um, you know, I'll use Kenny Everett as an example because he he crossed over the other way. He was like on radio and then he crossed over to TV. Mm. Like he, Kenny Everett, obviously, because he produced all his own, you know, mm. his own jingles and, yeah. and stuff like that. So he was obviously someone who was trained in the art or had learned it, you know, exceptionally well. And, you Which, know, it is um... an art. I mean, I've watched my friend, like, uh, um, I sat in with him when he was presenting at our local radio station. Um, peak 107 back in the late 90s and um you know he to you know it it's hard to do it properly and on your own without any with you know without any producer helping you yeah. or, or whatever you know it, it's harder than it looks and well, you know i don't know just someone like jameson to me it was like well have they got him because he's a bit of a kind of talking head on for things or he's yeah, yeah. The newspaper editor that's... Was, yeah i mean he was a journalist wasn't he, he was a yeah, you, uh, he came in here, he had, editor, I think, oh, for, for some years. But uh, DJing, it was an art because what people is when you put a record on it, they don't just drop the needle down. You have to cue it. Usually, I mean, I learned all this because my, my dad was involved in hospital radio. So mm. I, mm. and the, on the turntables, you have this felt bit of felt, and you mm. cue the record up, you'd let the thing go, and you'd hold it by the bit of felt. Yeah, and then you just let it go. Now, when I started doing discos, that's how I, you know, I could cue up a record as good as any professional DJ. Mm. It's all about queuing it up, you know. I, I did a, I did a bit of DJing for a while. It was on the internet, so it's easier. But I had um, a virtual turntable, so you were still lining up tunes and then you know cross fading from one into the other or whatever. You see, that was the art of crossfire. Yeah, I mean, you know, not not to the not to the extent that obviously, if you had a proper stylus and you got you know a couple of decks and a proper sound mixer and everything, you know, it's not quite the same. But um, the principle was there. Yeah, I mean, I I couldn't. I used to I used to help my dad, you know, and uh, and the guy that was sort of in charge of training them, and he he he, he said if it weren't for your age, he said you'd get your own program. Yeah, I was, I was I was fifteen. Well, my my dad used to help help out with um, I think it was Southampton Hospital, yeah. and um, only for a while. But he was the one that went round to all the wards and asked people what records they wanted. Yeah, I used to do that with my dad. Yeah, and then go round and and pick them all out and then give them to the DJ and say, look, these are who wants what, bloody bloody blah, you know. Yeah, my dad invented radio bingo. They used to play bingo. On Saturday oh. afternoons in, oh, right, in okay. general. <laughs> Don't remember oh, that. Yeah, I I used to be the I used to I used to do the pull the numbers out. Mm. I, would, I, couldn't, would have... I didn't talk. Yeah, I was all right. When would when would that be? Yeah, when would that be? You have to right? pass a test. There's a strict rate. Right, you have to pass a voice test. Yeah. So I couldn't because I was too young. Yeah. And I used to do that. I used to go yeah. around doing the requests, yeah. set, doing the bingo yeah. tickets. Yeah. You know, I, I was allowed to go on to the wards. Yeah. When was when was that then? What year would have that been? God, oh, that would have been what 15, 16. That was this 1980. Ah, right. No, yeah. 19... my dad, my dad didn't do it till the late 90s, I don't think. Yeah. The I funny thing is, what was quite <laughs> funny was um, when we have a balloon show, we used to have a balloon show, and the hospital's radio was still going. And I wandered over to the tent just to be nosy. And they were trying to sort of um, get me as a volunteer. Well, we'll train you. And I just looked at this lad and I went, you Don't need to train me. Well, my dad was a. a very, a, was on radio in N Valley. Many, mm. many, he's one of the. He was at there at the beginning. Oh, can we interest you? I says, I've done it. I says, you remember the remember the radio bingo? I, said, I was involved with that. 
<laughs> so we can't interest you. I went, no, I says, no. I said, I'm just glad you're still going. But, you know, I mean, some of the DJs that my dad knew, they went on to uh, when Radio Northampton started back in 82. Some of them got things like the guy that used to do the bingo with my dad, he got a regular spot on Radio Northampton. Mm. Uh, oh, I think our most sort of uh, famous, if you like, semi local DJ was Scott Mills. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's yeah. a bit of a legend now, isn't he? Old Scott yeah. Mills. He, uh, he started off from Power FM, which we used to listen to a lot. That, was, Paul, that was Portsmouth based. I, I don't think, I, I don't rate him. Like, well, he's, he must have done, he must have been doing something right to to get the gig, well, you know. Well, yeah, but from my own personal preference, I mean, yeah. you know, it's like it's just like a it's kind of bland sort of oh, a guy fr from local radio made who yeah who made it to national. Fair enough. Nah. but no, radio uh, Power FM was mate was was very very popular because we had Power in the Park and all sorts, and that was right up there with the you know like the Radio One Road shows. Yeah. We've got a radio and yeah. radio Northampton now. His name's Bernie Keith. Um, it's the only is he's allowed to play his own records. Is is his one man produced? He doesn't. Yeah, he's brilliant, and he does he does glam rag discos, which are brilliant. Yeah, uh, he's he's great. And someone says you could go on ra national radio, and he says no, my heart's at local radio. But mm. then he's he's forced to play what everybody else wants rather than yeah. his own stuff. No, which you I can get. turn his show on. I mean, when I finish recording, I put on Radio Northampton, and you just don't know what you get. One day you get the Bee Gees playing, the next day you get um, rockabilly. You get or you get proper music. Oh, you just reminded me actually. A laser, a laser five five eight is now on the internet. Is it? It came back this year. Yeah. Blimey. When I was doing my research, and it came up, and I thought, "Oh, okay." Obviously, completely different people, but you know, I think they do archive shows as well, so it might be worth having a listen. Yeah, I mean, when I was, you know, when I started heavily getting into music, if I wanted to listen to what I liked, it was late night stuff. Yeah, with the headphones on, you know. Yeah. If it weren't for people like John Peel, I'd have never got into Susie well, and the and thing, Joy wrote... Division. That's where I first heard. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a new order. That's that was Peely. Yeah, that, that's that's Peel all yeah. uh, all day long, in it. Yeah, yeah, the jam was the first champ, champion in indie music and and not alternative stuff. Yeah, yeah I mean, first place I, know, I, I tried to think what state um, British music would have been in without him. To be honest. Yeah. If he'd well, not, then, you know, if he if he'd not been there to do that, can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a lot, a lot of night, like the um, Tommy Vance rock show. Yeah, there's the same. You used yeah. to listen to that when you weren't you weren't supposed to be asleep because it was like a school night or something. No, it was a Friday night, you know. Oh, that was it, yeah, late Friday. That was it. Was it was always yeah. on a Friday night, the music yeah. vendor. Yeah. And I've got the record that that instrumental is in his theme tune is actually a track by Dixie Dregs. All oh, right, okay. Take it off the top, and I've got that. It's an absolutely brilliant bit of music. Yeah. I, I got to meet him, Tommy Vance. Yeah, he was very, brilliant. very much an old school DJ. They oh, wanted, God. yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I, I did. I don't have many. I know, I know. I listened to it quite a bit, but the main memory I have it was um, they had Magnum in concert on there. Yeah, I've still got that. You know, really. I recorded it and I've still got it. Because that would have been that would have been eighty something, wouldn't it? Eighty seven. Yeah, I remember listening to it and I thought I'd never heard of Magnum before. And it's like, oh, these are quite good. I uh, never did. I never did buy any records, but I really should do. Yeah, I, I went to see the firm in Hammersmith, and then the yeah. week later, Tommy Vance put it out on thing. And yeah. for a very very long time, when Status Quo did their any twentieth anniversary gig at the NEC 1982 up yeah. until they brought out live from the BBC the only we all had the live recordings of that because that was the only copies that were going the whole concert yeah. was put on radio the Friday rock show so you, the garden party apart from Marillion he did yeah. the Mama's Boy set the Jeff Rotel 
uh, Magnum, Gary Moore. Yeah. So that is that copy of Magnum you got? Is that an official release, or is that just off the radio? Straight off the radio. I cleaned it up from tape, transferred it onto CD. Have you got it on digital? Yeah, I've got it on digital now. I've got uh, it uh, if, you, if, if, if you allow, if you allow me to get in contact with you, mate, I wouldn't mind a copy. Yeah, I'll send you a copy of that. It's just, even got... just bring back memories, you know. Yeah, you, you go halfway through the track. You don't get the whole gig. You go from it's from when the radio yeah. went one went live. But there's a good. Well, it filled up a C ninety. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember it being along for a long time. Yeah, I've got yeah. that. Yeah, that's oh, really really good. That's oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not a massive fan, but just I think it was because it was live and you didn't expect them to be playing live music, effectively. Yeah, uh, uh, one of the... I mean, it was when Vigilante hadn't even come out. Yeah. That's how good of it. Mm. Yes, he did. <laughs> one of the best mustaches in the business. Well, I, I, I didn't know what they looked like for ages until... No, I think he'd done about Tom Selleck, because Nick wouldn't know who Magnum Yeah, because it took a while for them to get into the UK Top 40, didn't it? Yeah, it wasn't until the Wings of Heaven. Yeah. Uh, other concerts are recorded off there, you know, bits from Donington, and... Yeah, he they used to do, do all the concerts. Yeah. I've, I've even done... Um, I was at a Saxon concert that went out live back in, would it have been 85, 86? Yeah. And they wanted us to make, there's a, there's a jingle <laughs> that we had to do. He went, rock with Tommy Vance. And we went, rock with Tommy Vance. Mm -hmm. And every yeah. time I hear that, I oh, used to hear it. I thought, God, I was in that crowd. Mm -hmm. That was would he, Hammersmith Odeon. Would um, Tommy Vance, when he first started, do you reckon he was a teddy, bit of a teddy boy? Yeah, I think, I mean, he loved, I mean, I, I, he did love rock and roll. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. it's so sad when he died, because once he died, rock music sort of took a bit of a, on right, yeah. Johnny Walker took up the mantle. There's still there's still people that are sort of doing it, because you've got to uh, get off a little bit of tangent, things like Classic Rock Magazine that's still keeping it, you know, out there. Yeah, but if... It's mainstream... not the same, I know. Yeah, it's not. I mean, to have rock music, I mean, America, that's where I wish I was in America. They had proper FM rock radio stations. Yeah. And it wasn't until Planet Rock arrived in this country on the digital that we haven't got a rock that's dedicated to rock music. Yeah. It's I mean, I'm, 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 We invented I'm, the damn music, you know, like it, heavy metal, and we haven't yeah. got our own dedicated channel. Isn't uh, Kerrang! Radio still going? Yeah, but... It, it, I don't know. A lot Kerrang of that's Americanised, isn't it, though? I don't know. Kerrang! I mean, when I was a... What Kerrang! play, even on the, on the video now, on the on telly, yeah. I wouldn't consider it rock music. No, no. Mm. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think what else I've got. Listen, oh, um, yeah, going up, this is something I said to Jimmy, going a bit off a bit of a tangent. Um, they started off on Radio 5 in, uh, I think it was 93. I'll, I'll just bear with me for a minute because I've got the deals written down here. And it was um, the first of three uh, things that they did. It started, started off on Radio 5, and it was uh, dramatizations of comic books. Right now, I've got a list here, and the first one was Superman, Doomsday, and Beyond. I don't know if anybody knows things about comic books. They killed off Superman for a while, and uh, they did a whole dramatization on it on Radio Five. And then uh, later on, on Mark Goodyear's show in '94 and '95, respectively, they did a Batman: The Dark Knight and The Amazing Spider-Man, and they were really, really good. Uh, Dramatizations. I know. I know it's not music, and it's a bit of a tangent. But you know, those were something that I listened to quite religiously. I've got them on tape somewhere. Yeah, and they were really, they were really very really well done. Good. So I mean, radio drama today. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I love radio dramas. I mean, I'm a one of my favourite writers is a lady called Dorothy L. Sayers. Now her 
most famous character is Lord Peter Whimsy. Mm. And they did some radio adaptations of some of her books. Brilliant. Poirot, there's a lot of Poirot that I've got all there and this yeah. Marvel. Yeah. And there's some really good modern ones. Yeah. There's one that, um, what's his name? Um, Hugo Spear, the actor. He did yeah, a, know, yeah. yeah, he did a thing called Stone. Hard hitting crime drama based around Manchester on the radio. Absolutely brilliant series. Mm. Uh, what's her name? She's in, she's been in lots of things. She's now the doctor, the, um, She's in Midsummer's Murders now. And then oh, yeah. she did another she did a thing as on the radio as well. That was very good. Um modern, there's some great not modern day, which it is but some great radio comedies that come out in the 2000s. Pet 33. Yeah. Which is uh, based about the code breakers at Bletchley Park. So it's local to me. Uh Bletchley Park and all that, and that had Robert Barthurst in it, and mm. what was his name? Um, something McQueen, Alex McQueen. Uh, uh, what's her name? Coleman. Uh, Olivia Coleman? Yeah, she plays a Polish person called Minka. Absolutely brilliant character. Mm. There's a thing yeah. called The Castle, which is set in medieval, it's set in the medieval times, but using modern stuff. Like elephants to catch eels, that's about smuggling. But they do it, they had a character in it, they were doing charity, and his name was some Bob of Geldof or something. And it was it was ever so funny. So it's it's set in the old in you know in smuggling times, but it's all yeah. modern themes. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Is there some great modern com comedies out there? Another one, uh are you like, and that's Old Harry's game. Yeah, I've, I've heard of that. I've, yeah, it's um, his it. name. Mm. The, uh, yeah, no, the one right. I, the one I remember being on those, on those, on those superhero ones was um, Garrick Hagen and his wife. Uh, Garrick Hagen played Biggs in Star Wars, right. and he's he's done quite a lot of uh, dramatization. There's, there's, oh. I, I couldn't tell you, but there's a few sort of like. Semi well known people. All right. Cash up everyone who had nine minutes past nine for his first Star Wars mention. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was it was the right. fact that because I got speaking to right, him. Right, right, moving, right, moving on before we get too <laughs> sci fi. Um, no, it's like just saying, Rick, you know. Richard had a good idea about to do uh, yeah. to do a quiz where each of us says uh, each of oh, us says a, a song title with radio in it and uh, Whoever, no, whoever can still keep going out of the three of us. Is oh, the well, I'll be out straight away. Um, do you want me to start, Richard? Uh, I'll start with uh, Radio by the Cause, which I know you'll appreciate. Radio Gaga. I was right. Let me go in that way. Uh, okay. Uh, video called The Radio Star. Radio by Ramstein, which he used on the Instagram post today. <laughs> Turn on the radio autograph. Um, <laughs> I told you I'm gonna get stuck. Five, oh. four, three. No, I can't think of anything. Uh, Jason's out. Um, yeah, on sorry. my radio, the selector. Oh, you bleeder. That was all I was going <laughs> Oh, then. Oh, god. Oh, five, four, three, two, one. Yay! I won. Well, that didn't last long, did it? <laughs> It last a bit longer. To be fair, I think I would have started struggling soon. Yeah, um, yeah um, that was well. That was a fun little interlude. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, there's something I want to ask Jason and Ian, but um, it's more of a guessing game, really. Uh, okay. Ray, uh, Wayno's just uh, said "Radio Song" by REM. That's a good shout. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Um, I want to know if uh, either Jason or Ian can guess my favourite current radio station, one that um, I would still listen to. I don't, I don't listen to it very often, but I do like to put it on now and again. Uh, I, no, wait, wait, don't start thinking yet, Jason. I can, okay. I, I can see you're, you know, I can think <laughs> about, about stand up and give your brains a chance, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll give you I'll give you a clue. I might give you a couple of clues. I'll give you my first clue. So this is gonna narrow it right down for you. It's a BBC station. 
Okay. So there you go. And if you need another clue, well, after a couple BBC of BBC Radio Six. No. Uh, Radio Five. No. Okay. Radio Two. No. Uh, can we ask questions? Mm, yeah, all right. Is it? Is it? Um, is it anything to do with the BBC at all? Well, yeah, I said it's a BBC station. It's a BBC station, right? Yeah. Okay, Jason, if that, if no, that no, 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 I was, I was really thinking, wasted. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Let's start. Sorry. Um... Oh, Radio Derbyshire. Well, there's no such thing. But if you mean okay, Radio no. Derby, yeah, no. Right, okay. I, I, I'll give you another clue. Soon as I said Radio Derby, it's not technically a local station. It's a, national, oh. it's a national one, so that narrows it down to only a few. Yeah. My fav uh, my favourite radio station. It has been for about getting on for ten years now. Radio three. No. Radio five live. Didn't you say that one earlier? I said, said radio, radio five. I didn't well, say radio five. Yeah. That is incorrect. I, I see. This is what this is why I asked you because I knew I knew we would be again. Pardon? BBC Sounds. Yeah, it's more of a kind of... Oh, it's like a... Radio radio. 1 Extra. No. <laughs> you're, you're, th you're thinking outside the box, though, Ian. That's good. So you're kind of getting a little bit warm. Shall we to tell you? Yeah. Go on, then. My favourite radio station is the BBC Asian Network. All right, OK. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. It would have been there again, the late eighties, and it, it was always the station my dad had tuned to in the car. I think because maybe the car we had at the time, although you could get radio one on medium wave, I think for some reason the local radio was um, was a lot stronger. Yeah. Um, and the strongest station and the one my dad always liked, and I know why he had it, and I know why he always tuned to it, um, is because of this one show that I really got into. Um, was a station, and um, you weren't too far off actually, Jason, when you said Radio Derby, because this was a Dar this was a Derby and Leicester based station called Gem AM. Right. Gem stands for um, Greater East Midlands or something like that. It still yeah. exists, but it's it's called something else now. <clears throat> and I think it, uh, I think they only had like one show a week, but we we're often in the car, like visiting family or or whatever, yeah. and we'd always have it on. And they played a brilliant and absolutely phenomenal Bangra program every Sunday, I think it was. I, I know you like that sort of music. And my dad, so yeah, and my dad, my dad would always put it on and we'd be like, oh, isn't this stuff great? Like me and me and my father really bonded over this Bangra music, you know, this, you know, this sort of yeah. Indian and Punjabi pop music. Well, it's and different, ever, wasn't it? Ever since then, I've been a massive Bangra fan. And yeah. anyone who knows anything about record collecting knows that collecting collecting Bangra, you know, like part Indian pop, you can get a lot yeah. of sort of older Indian stuff, but Indian pop on uh, on on vinyl or even mm. CD is is difficult unless you live in certain areas. Um, so yeah, essentially, you know, to cut uh, a, a, a not just... too long story even <laughs> shorter. The reason that uh, the reason that BBC Asian Network is my favourite radio station now, and it's one I'll still put on now and again when I've got some time, is because they is because they're the only station that I know yeah. of, what with a good reception, yeah. people, but also internet that plays bang that plays Bangra and um, yeah. and Indian subcontinent pop music. Fair enough. Yeah. No. So um, um, yeah. So I think the closest. Closest I got to that is stuff like um, Cooler Shaker and stuff like that with all those no, it's, no, no, influence. No, no, no. I know, I know what you, I know what you're on about. No, I know because you've Cooler, played me some. No, Cooler Shaker isn't Bangra. Cooler Shaker. No, I know it isn't. Cooler Shaker play a type of ragga rock sometimes. Yeah, yeah. completely different. Bangra. Well, they, yeah, but they do sitars and all that like in there, don't they? That's my, what I'm my definition of Bangra from just yeah. what I listened to as a child and what I still manage to listen to every now and again now. Yeah. It's. It's pop. It's pop music. It's like yeah. you know dance pop, but it's obviously got that Indian flavour yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I suppose like the the one the biggest Bangra hit in the UK 
would have been arguably, I would have said around 2003, I think it was, and it would have been Punjabi MC, Mundian Tabakke, which sampled the Night Rider I've theme. Had that. That, that was, you, you'll, you'll have heard it, Jason, you'll yeah. know it. You'll know it when you hear it. Um, that that did well. That got top 10 over here sort of like 20-ish years ago. Um, everyone's still doing that radio quiz in the chat. Yeah. But that's fine. I, I had thought of one, actually. Uh, well, it's all yeah, right. When, when, when you finish, when you finish. Type in the chat. Type in the chat, then. Um, I don't what know if I've got a, a great book I want to show. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, so thanks to Gem AM and listening to it in the car religiously, like every, like every Sunday. I'm sure it was a Sunday. They, they may have had a Saturday show, to be honest, because it, it feels like your memory plays tricks on you, doesn't it? But it feels like I, I heard more than what really I should have done, just sat in a car for half an hour. Do you know what I mean? It's like maybe, you know, it feels like I heard it more. But, I mean, we, we never taped any, because I think because it was medium wave, it, it sounded good in the car, but... My dad couldn't get a good reception at home, yeah. so he couldn't tape any. And um, yeah, it's the sort of thing that like, I think if you went to like sort of Leicester and Derby and went in their market halls and stuff, you'd you'd find like stalls where um, where Indian families were selling all these banger mm. tapes. And I wish I'd been old enough to like actually go and buy some. And then oh, by yeah. the time I was getting into collecting music. Um, in the in the mid nineteen nineties, it's like I didn't I didn't really know where to go or what to do to obtain any banger, so I kind of just left it. So that's why I, I really yeah. recommend, I really rate Asian Network. I mean, yeah, it's a national station and it's di it's digital. It's not you can't get it on FM or anything, uh, but it's no. digital and internet, so it's easy enough to get you know via sounds or whatever you want to do. Um, if you're into that sort of stuff, which I know are not a lot, not a lot of people are, but I, mm. it's one of my favourite genres, Bangra. It's just so, it's so much fun, and it's so listenable, and um, everything's just so catchy, and it's it's uplifting as well. It, you know, it's it's. I mean, there will be Bangra ballads out there, but I can't say I've heard too many of them. It's just that sort of, you know me. I like electronic stuff, so it leans into that as well. Someone. So, so just uh oh, we're going on with this. Um but, oh, um, right, okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um no, there was the um, in, Oh sorry, go go on, Chase. It was uh in Nim and Im and Blah, in Nim and Lou or something like that. That but, um, we, um, no, 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 yeah. Indian song. There again, you, there again, you, you're mixing your genre. I know, I know it wasn't. I know, but I just o remember Oprah really Haza, liking that song. Oprah Haza was Israeli. She wasn't. She wasn't from. Oh, was she? Ah, right. Thank you. Yeah, she. She was. She was. And I'm saying was because sadly she passed away from AIDS in yeah. the early 2000s. Um, I love it. I've got. I've got her last album actually got reissued last year, and I've got it. Yeah. Um. So I, um, so yeah, you can't you can't count her as. Uh, oh, no, 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 I, I wasn't saying she was in that. I just remember listening to that it, song. You... It's, a, it's a type of it's a type of world music. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah. you kind of you, you're leaning into the right area, but it's just yeah. not the, it's just not the right area. Uh, sorry, Ian, it... you were gonna you were gonna tell us about a book that you've got. Yeah, sorry, I have. Yes. Let's get rid of that. I'll just get rid of that chat. Written by Mick Wall. A John Peel book. Oh, right. Okay. Excellent. Absolutely excellent. It's got some great pictures in here. I can find them. The Radio 1 DJs. Well, it's uh, a yeah. general what, A to Z. Yeah, that's go. Uh, yeah, it's got like different all the times that he was with them. Mm. Yeah, my dad had a. Now, what it is? I think it might be in his autobiography. Actually, he wrote. Oh, what Peel's autobiography called? I'm sure he had it. It was either an autobiography or it, or it, or it was. Um, it was a biography. It was a biography written by someone else. I seem to be reading it around the time of his death. Yeah, I've, I've uh, 
Yeah, this was written. I don't know when this came out, but I picked. Oh, this was a birthday present. It's a wonderful book. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he had such a fascinating life. I mean, he, he worked in America for, for a number of yeah. years, didn't he? See, there's another great, there's a talking Americans, one of my favorite American um, DJs is Paul Gambaccini. Yeah, it's, it's all right. I mean, it's. Um... He's got a good. He's got a good um, head for like retaining statistics and stuff. Yes. Gamb yeah. Gamb well, he his music. He did a show about American top tens and that. Um, oh, because of there's there's that we used to have on a Sunday dinner time by someone that we don't mention anymore. He used mm. to do a great top ten. <laughs> yeah. And because it was in, I mean, when I was listening to it in the seventies, you know, we're going to do the from the ten year, you know. From ten years ago, nineteen sixty something, and twenty years ago, from nineteen fifty something. We we can mention a certain unmentionable person if you want, if it, if mm. you've got any particular sort of story or or anecdote. But um, um, yeah. I, don't, I didn't really, I didn't really want to bring him up just for the sake of it because I I no, uh, I, 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 I think he was he was I've a, a radio memory. I've got plenty of TV memories of him, that's for sure. But yeah, yeah, but no, he was at the time he was a very good DJ. You know he. You know, he was he was the guy that sort of got top of the pops going. So you can't mention him, but uh, yeah, he mm. was he was good in his day. Yeah, uh, Nick asked when John, uh, how old John Peel was when he passed away. I want to say he was it was well into his sixties. It might be late sixties, sixty-seven, something like that. Uh, yeah. it might be something like around that. Yeah. 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 But no, he did a heck of a lot for promoting music, oh. and like you say, you know, bands that perhaps wouldn't have got a look in otherwise. Mm. In the back of here, it's got like, all the festivals and the people that he sort of promoted, and yeah, I mean, the people that just go Captain Beefheart, mm. Joy Division, Mark Bolan, yeah, well, they the one everyone knows is the uh, Undertones. Yeah, and, and the fall. He was mad on the fall. Who, and that's one thing I I kind of disagreed with John yeah. Peel on. I I can I can never get into the fall. Just can't do it. I'm sure I'm sure if I if I really tried, I'm, there might be some of their stuff I'd, I'd, I'd enjoy. But generally, can't get into yeah. it. Yeah. Never never have, and I don't think I ever will. Yeah, well, yeah. Richard's also saying that he was uh, he was a big Wogan fan. Yeah, yeah. Wogan. Uh, for me, he's another one. I, although I have heard it, I heard his breakfast show on Radio Two a number of times. But he's someone else for me. He's more a TV guy for me personally, or the or the Eurovision guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nick's in agreement with me. He can't stand the fall either. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I say I can't. I wouldn't say I can't stand them. It's just I don't like. Them. I can't get into them. You know. You know. It's, yeah. It's they're one of those bands that like this kind of legendary and alter alternative circles, but I it they do nothing, they, they don't grab me like they should do. Maybe I've never really listened to them all that much. To be fair, there's a couple of songs, probably if you said hit, hits, I go, Oh, yes, yeah. I've heard that, but, but yeah. yeah, um, I mean, this has been um, a uh, a fascinating discussion we've covered local radio and national radio we've yeah. talked about some of our least favorite and no doubt some of our very favorite radio presenters yeah. have either of you two got any any other points or any other um, anecdotes you want to make about about I radio we, I was, I can i just put in there about nick is it a good it is an excellent read nick and if you want to borrow it you can come and get it there you go uh, John, yeah, I'll make you, 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 you big for a sec, just so that he can he can see the cover properly. There you go. I um, don't know, sorry, I've got different windows open. John Peel. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, if you want to borrow that, Nick, you know where I am now. You can come and get it whenever there you like. Let us know when you're coming, mate, and you can borrow that. <laughs> Brilliant. There we go. Um, um, yeah, I'm just looking just looking at my notes a minute. What I've got left. Um, I think the only other thing was, uh, hang on, where are we? Oh, well, yeah, going back to Radio Solid, the thing my used to mum used to live at listen to every day was the uh, Richard Cartridge and Sylvia, Sylvia Willoughby show. Um, that was uh, a, pr a bit of a riot. There was uh, loads of like banter backwards and forwards, and um, you know, I don't, I don't remember any particular one thing, but my mum absolutely loved it, and. Uh, you know that would that could be quite a chaotic show. There's lots of double entendres going on, and uh, 
Yeah, just a generally good, fun morning show. But you know, a bit like in the sort of like the vein, the way the uh, similar vein as Wogan's uh, breakfast show was. You know, it was just good lighted humour. You know, perhaps a little bit risky in places, but for the most part, uh, yeah, just just a good and fun program. And used to have that on like you know nearly every morning. And who remembered Mark and Lard? Yeah. Yes, I was going to mention them earlier. Yeah, they were funny. Yeah, they sort of took over. You know, from Steve Wright, didn't they? they, they, yeah. they... Mm. Well, it was the what was it, the Shire Horses? Yeah. Yeah. I've never listened to all those albums actually. There's quite oh, a few I, of them. I've heard, it. I've, I've heard the first one certainly because yeah. we had it when I was at college radio. That was what <coughs> one of the presenters would bring in. Yeah, well, it, it, were, just... it were a handy album to have actually because some if because like uh, most of the tracks didn't didn't tend to last more than about a minute or a minute yeah, and a half. Yeah, yeah. So if, if you had a little bit of time to kill before you were handed over to the next presenter or the next program, yeah. Um, but and you need and you and you didn't have a long enough jingle or ad or anything. It was quite good. You could just stick something from the Shire horses on as yeah. long, as long as it what didn't have any swearing in it. You had you had to go oh, through the some album. of them did, yeah. That's my my, <laughs> progr my program controller, the guy who ran the station, yeah. was was my best friend Lee, who, who I mentioned earlier. But he knew that um, he'd be the one who got into trouble if anyone, not not just him, but me or anyone else, yeah. played anything that had swearing or questionable content in. Because we're broadcasting in the college refectory, you see. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and we still get complaint. Like I, I once played. Uh, I'll always remember this. I once played a B side off a Silver Sun single, and because one of the lyrics was. She gave him her wet pants to smell. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, I, I shit you not. Knock at the door later on. It was one of the members of staff saying, "Did you play a song that had that had uh, something about wet pants in it?" And and Lee answered, and Lee's got to kind of sort of answer for me. Uh, yeah, I think we did actually. And uh, well, please, oh, don't play, please don't play that again. Good job they didn't <laughs> play them. Good job they didn't all play Green Knickers by the Baron Knights, wasn't it then? Yeah. <laughs> like, one of my my friend, my late friends. I mean, he was he was in the uh, British Army, and he used to go on. He was based out in Belize, yeah. and uh, he was on the forces radio. And at the end of the night, you had to play the national anthem. Mm. Yes, and he was he was fed up of just playing the boring gods, you know. <laughs> so he once played Brian May's version at the end of um, yeah. Night of the Opera. I didn't. I didn't know he he done a version of it. To be yeah, at the end of Night of the Opera, Brian May plays the national anthem, and uh, he played that next morning. Commanding officer's <laughs> office. You're supposed to play the. He apparently, he said you're supposed to play the national anthem. Well, I did, sir. <laughs> well, he says, but you didn't play the you decide what version of the national anthem. He said, "You're lucky I didn't play the Sex Pistols. God save the Queen." Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That, that is a, technically a, a totally different track. So, yeah, you could no. kind of that would that would be asking for trouble, I suppose. Really, but. did um. Just going off on that time, did uh, Jimi Hendrix ever get uh, into trouble for doing the American anthem the way he did? I know I it's not quite the same because it's not I royalty. So. I, don't, I don't think he did because I think people were just impressed with his virtue. Yeah, yeah. Oh. The only person I know who got, and this is really drifting off the the topic, but the only person <laughs> I know who got, who got into loads of trouble for a rendition of the American national anthem was... Um, when Roseanne Barr sung it in public once, and she oh, was, she sounded absolutely awful. Yeah, well, you're not somebody you associate with singing, is she? So, well, no, it, it makes you wonder why, why did even sort of have her really? You know, do do yeah. something like that. I don't think it was at a Super Bowl, but I think it was at some big sports event or something. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Like, uh, I was the, my. Camera's the right one. Is it the right round round? Yeah. Oh, oh, we always did. Yeah, we'll give uh, another plug to the peel book now that he's not. Thank um, you, Richard. There we go. There it is. And you yeah. can see what he says it's now. It's not. It's not Leap no Hodge now. It's John Peel. <laughs> yeah. Written by the great Mick Wall, who I have met as well. He's a nice chap as well. Mm, there we go. 
Fair play. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else really now. I think that's yeah. covered most um, of so what yeah, I remember. Um, any anything else anyone want, wants to talk about just before we we sign off or you know any um we we gave all our channels a bit of a plug earlier on um yeah. so we, we've got that bit of business out of the way like I say just a reminder for those who have come in late we're not on in two weeks we're on again in three weeks sorry for the delay blame the baseball cap wearer of us um yeah yeah I'm off to a gig yeah, I, I wanted to do it in two weeks anyway without him, but he did start crying and said not to. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, but, uh, uh, but I have planned something a lot of fun, um, something yeah. uh, that we've done um, of a sort before for in three weeks. So I do hope that you'll join yeah. us again for that. Um, but um, I think we've had a really good discussion about radio t today. I, I didn't want to end this without people, oh, without was... Ian and Jason having made yeah. any, uh, oh. any points. Um, oh, well, let, me, yeah. let me just answer this question from Richard. How yeah. many Stones albums do I need to get? I can reveal, oh. Richard, that I am now miss as far as studio albums are concerned, oh. don't count any oh. live or compilations as of. Me having ordered one from Vinyl Tap about two days ago, I've got one left. I need to get Ooh. one. I know when oh, I to, when I collect, to... I really collect. Wait, and which there we go. Ivan's given us some more information about the Roseanne Barr thing. She sang yeah. the national anthem at the Padres game oh. in 1990. Oh, yeah, um, and she was she was a big star on TV. Oh, she was, yeah. Far, she? Um. Yeah, let me let not here because obviously you don't, you don't want to reveal oh. what you've what you've got in this last uh, record. But let me know what stones one you need. I'll have a look out for oh. it. Yeah, I'll uh, yeah I'll tell oh. you. Um, but yeah, um, so oh. yeah, that, that's going to be it from us uh, tonight. Um, in, enjoyed that a lot. I want to say a big thank you to co-host Jason oh. and he who had a lot a lot more oh. memories and anecdotes than oh. I did really. But yeah, yeah well, well, it reminded oh. me of a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm, um, an old, I'm an old git. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Ian, Ian, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to say anything to your face, but that's why we have you on here. <laughs> yeah, we, you, we need no, someone for the old, who represents the older generation. Oh, you know, yeah. he went there for. Oh, yeah. God, you got a, a good head for uh, figures and memories and stuff, though. Yeah. It's, yeah. Stuff oh, that, it's not know. that one, Richard. I've got, I've got that. I've got that one. Oh, I've I... That's coming up on oh. a, a records roundup oh. that I filmed, mm -hmm. but in out for about two weeks. So there just... you go. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Special guest by Rocky. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes, course, yeah. yeah. Always, always happy to hear Rocky in the background. Yeah. In the background. Um, um, yeah, he, 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 always, he always wants to burn. I suppose. Um, I've, I know what Rocky looks like. I've seen him. I suppose Rocky's a bit like the oh. DJ of us because we can hear him, but we oh. can't necessarily. Yeah, he's not kind of the dog. <laughs> yeah. um, can I just do one last little uh, promo, please? Oh, okay. If you haven't seen my Under the Radar series, please do go and watch it. Oh, I'm the, um, the, the first part oh, of this series. Yeah, I, I've had a lot of positive, uh, a lot of positive feedback from it, especially oh. from Jimmy and Ian here. And um, yeah, I'm. I don't like to blow my own kazoo, as I've said, but I'm I'm quite proud oh. of it. So yes, you know, it's very good. Yeah, and, I'm, and, I'm um, so. Let, let me know also not just your opinions of it but what other songs do you like you know that would be nice to know what what songs on there that i played do you like or do you think they're all rubbish and didn't deserve to be in the top 40 at all well i personally i thought there was a good the, the, oh, the, 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 the there, there were a couple i was vaguely familiar with, with yeah with it, it's with. weird that some of them didn't get in though because they're very oh. popular tunes well some of the ones i would never heard of and i was like oh yeah i want to listen to more of that that sounds yeah good, but... And I don't often think that for like music from the really early sixties, because for me that's still kind of you know yeah. rock and roll era, which is not yeah, something yeah. I'm into. But um, yeah, make sure you subscribe to Not Suitable with Mum. Watch the first with Mum video, <laughs> episode one of Under the Radar, and uh, he's going to be bringing you that every Saturday without yeah. fail. That's what I'm going to try and do because he knows I'll kick him oh. up the arse if he misses a week. Yeah, I know you will. Uh, there yeah. you go. You've just earned a sub from Ivan Music Man. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Ivan. Yeah, Ethan appreciate it, really mate. Appreciate that. Of course, Ian has got plenty going on this week, and you'll be back live with Dave and the gang on Thursday yeah, at we'll eight be there PM. On Thursday, Rocky will be back. Yes, that no, should be very good. Yep, yeah, and, um, Rock and Rocky as well, of course. Yes. Um, yeah, I've said what I've got going on. No more. Um, I'll I'll be appearing on on Ian's um, over the weeks. I'm sure. 
and uh, Simon as well, Vinyl Dale. Uh, but no more sodcast from me and the gang until three weeks' time. Yeah. Um, so do look out for that um, uh, when I put up the uh, you know all the promotion and stuff. But yeah, that we are having the... a week's break. Yeah, I think that's the twenty first, if I remember correctly. Yeah, twenty first. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got, I've got one more thing to say. Can okay. I just thank everybody that voted in the trial run mm, for the new yeah. Yeah. the pizza debate? Mm. <laughs> It was just it was a great one. Thank you for all your comments as well because it has helped me. <laughs> that yeah, that's where we're going. Yeah, the RTO battle royal resumes and it resumes in a in a safe and fair <laughs> manner this week. Environment. So, yeah. So, so uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're all very optimistic that the, the <laughs> battle royal contest is is gonna <laughs> is gonna go on and complete now in a fair fashion. And, yeah, that's fashion and then we'll be able to do another one for next year. Yeah, oh, another one next. So it's going to be an annual competition now. Oh, yes. I think this is just like the FA Cup. I think it's quite popular. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. then Yes, there is is a Sodcast happening in May. I didn't didn't want to promote that too early, but yes, uh, there's a special one coming up um, first Sunday in May um, that, uh, that Nick's telling you about there. Uh, but more information on that much nearer the time. But thank you for, for mentioning it, Nick. Yeah, there, might be a, there might be a special one in July. Ah, I mean, July has gone by. That's, a, that's an exclusive <laughs> for us. Get, Jason will be like, oh, well, there's going to be a special one at Christmas. Yeah, yeah. I'll, go up there, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll not, yeah, it's something you've discussed with me. And Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, so, yeah, lots of things to look forward to. But as for the next one, Number seventeen. It will be three weeks today. But thank you all. Uh, thank you everyone who's who's watched, be it live or yeah, in uh, on the replay. And um, we'll see you around on YouTube over the days, weeks, and whatever. But uh, don't forget, tune into Ch- uh, Ranking the Obscure live on Thursdays, and uh, do tune into us again in three weeks' time.